continue to show the attack by The Rock on Cody Rhodes last week, which is becoming the centerpiece of this entire WrestleMania feud. Also, because <laughs> I'm a bad person, it made me laugh. I was like, why is nobody ringing the police? And instead we're just going, ha ha ha, we love violence. And we do. Also, hello, my friends, and welcome to Ups and Downs. And it's a very special Ups and Downs because it is WrestleMania 40 week. And if you're a pub like me, you shall do the dance of joy. And then other people will look at you like that guy is really, really weird. But of course, if you are going to be out of Philadelphia, there's two things that you're going to do. If you see anybody from what culture, make sure you say hello because that makes us feel warm and fuzzy in our tum tums. And on the Sunday, we are having a live event. There's only 20 tickets left. So if you do want to come and be involved in all the craziness. Make sure you get your ticket today. That's enough plugging. Let's up those downs. First thing that did happen on Raw, though, is Michael Cole saying, I want to make it very clear that Cody Rhodes has not been cleared medically this evening, so you won't see him. That's like, I know what you're doing, Mike. But of course, he was actually going to be here. As the first hour of Raw as well was commercial free, of course, who was the first person to come out? It was The Rock. Ironically, he was going to cook. And he made sure to verbally recap the fact he made that boy bleed. And fair play to the guy. Because as he was going through it, everyone kept going, what, what? Which is the chart will never die. But he just rode this way before he finished it by going, the only thing messing from that belt that does have Cody's blood on it is Mama Rose's tears. And everybody stopped and went, oh my gosh, that's disgusting. It also means at SummerSlam, I now need the match of Mrs. Rhodes versus The Rock. Don't get mad at me. That's what I've been tempted into here. When the great one even went, hey, Look at these videos, and he showed some reaction stuff from social media of kids crying their eyes out because they were so worried about Cody after the final boss tried to kill him. But the Rock kind of went babyface here too because he was like, look, I just want to talk to these children and say, sometimes a man has got to do what a man has to do, especially when someone talks shit about him. Now this was parts, well that's quite nice, but parts... This guy is totally unhinged because he just had a way about it. You also think this is a nice reminder when we are going crazy on the internet that wrestling is for children. When they buy into this level, it is kind of cool when The Rock said, hey, it's just not me here this evening and out Wayne Roman Reigns. Now the Tribal Chief did come out and he was all like, listen, do you know what's important to me? Family. Look at my t-shirt. What does it say? Family. Family, family. And I was like, dude, you are so screwed. We are going to get back to the future four, which is going back to 1997 because The Rock is definitely going to oust you from your own group. Roman also said no yeet to the fans because they were chanting yeet, which also made me laugh. When he was quite comfortable at this weekend's WrestleMania, because thanks to his cousin, it's going to be damn easy. Because they are going to totally smash Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins on night one, then he can finish off the American Nightmare on night two, when he was all just, man, this rock. He did it for his family. So once again, my eyebrow was going up. I was like, Roman, you better run. Even though The Rock, during his speech, had also said, oh my gosh, I'm breaking all records. It was Reigns this time that said, hey, we made wrestling cool again in 2020, which is something The Rock has been saying too. And what was happening then with Cody Rhodes? He was just off somewhere doing nothing. Shots fired. Now Cody is trying to stick his oar in though, so come Sunday night, they have to end him. But by this stage, they had forgotten about wrestling clause 4.8, which clearly states in the rule book, if you say a wrestler's name too much, out they must come, especially at the start of Raw. And given that Cody Rhodes apparently wasn't here, Seth Rollins came out instead. Now, he is a smart baby face who so didn't get in the ring because he understands wrestling math and he was outnumbered. But given that this was the biggest Raw ever, and in terms of the gate, that was true, we need the biggest main event ever when he challenged The Rock to a match. This place lost it. He also said that if The Rock didn't have the balls, he'd take on Roman too. And now look, this was never going to happen. You don't give that away before WrestleMania. But in terms of making the audience go, oh my gosh, it totally worked. Rock then responded by saying that he'd beaten in Cody Rhodes' brain so bad that Seth may have brain damage or something like that. When Sola Sokoa grabbed the microphone, I was like, bro, I know what you're going to do. You're going to get so booed. He said, it's not going to be The Rock. It's not going to be The Roman Reigns. It's going to be me. Surprise, surprise, everyone went with bow. Now, I do want to point out that I do love Solo, and this did make all the sense in the world, because Rock then said, and hey, it is going to be a Bloodline Rules match, so it was essentially going to be a preview of what could happen in a few days' time. Clearly, they were given all the time as well, because this did go a long old while, but I was so damn invested. When something's working, it just works. That's the least poetic thing I'll ever say in my life, but I am going to give it an up especially because we ain't done. We then saw a clip from the MMA hour because Rhea Ripley and Becky Lynch had got onto it in front of Ariel Hawani when Bex was in the back and she was like, Rhea, I'm going to go to the ring later and I'm going to call you out. 
I'll let you know right now, she did. When we had the fastest eight-man tag ever. Sheesh. But it was the Judgment Day taking on the New Day and DIY, which once again made all the sense in the world. I mean, they're all going to be in that ladder match, so they may as well fight. We were also told during this that the only way to win that damn thing, though, is that both sets of titles must be grabbed. And now we've made it painfully clear, but there's nothing wrong with that. As I keep telling you, a Raw team will grab one side, the SmackDown team will grab the other side, and then we will have two sets of tag team championships. Now, I am more of a one-set championship kind of a guy, but it doesn't matter. I've got real problems. Just make sure one set go to our truth in the mist. Finn Balor also has this massive welt over his eye at the moment. Apparently something happened on a house show. So that was nuts. Now I got worried about Johnny Gargano because he did this dive. And I swear, he went crashing into Adam the announce table. Now apparently he was okay. But I tell you, that's really scary. Otherwise though, ultimately, eventually Damien Priest did grab Tommaso Ciampa. And he gave him the razor's edge to get the one, two, three. This made me stroke my chin because I was like, well, if they did win here, maybe they're not winning on Saturday night and they're going to lose those tag team championships. I mean, I only went about six minutes, but like I say, I still had a good time getting it up. When we went Rocky, I don't mean The Rock, I mean Rocky Balboa. Shit, man, that's going to cause real problems. But we did indeed see Sami Zayn and Chad Gable training for his big match with Gunther. And not only were they studying tape, but they were like doing moves in the ring as we got this absolutely over the top music. At one point though, Chad accidentally choked out Sammy and he was like, what are you doing? I was like, this is the whole point of the training session. But that's when Gabe was like, man, this is what I'm talking about. You don't believe you can win and you need to open up to me. And Sam was like, well, it is true. I'm just so worried about letting my wife, friends and family down again. That's why he has been holding back though, but that's when Chad gave him this big pep talk and it only took about three seconds to convince Sami Zayn that he has to give it his all. And then we saw Gable going for that choke again. And this time Sami Zayn got out of it. Yes. So it just goes to show that everything needs to be a montage. And of course, like I say, it is tying into the Rocky aspect. And I know that some people are going to think this is way too silly because the emotional stuff was through the roof. But I like it when wrestling does that. And when Sami Zayn does win that Intercontinental title, once again, warm and fuzzy in my tum-tum, getting it up. When we teased more issues with the Judgment Day. Oh no. Because they were in the clubhouse when Lagarde Del Fantasma walked in because of course they're buddies with Dominic now. And Damien Priest was super pissed. He was like, listen, we all understood you're doing what you have to do when it comes to your deadbeat dad, but these chumps should not be in our house. He then stormed off to make a phone call and even Rhea Ripley was like, uh, condom, I don't like what you're doing here. Although she did agree, all right, fine. I will try and smooth this out. The thing is though, when you do think about it, who is best to be the reason that the day of judgment does break up? Well, it absolutely would be Dominic Mysterio. Sami Zayn then decided he would try and get some momentum going by avenging his loss against Bronson Reed when he did the same thing that he did last week. Because Bronson began all this by slapping man meat until Sami Zayn was able to get a sunset flip power bomb. When he tried to continue on with that, he wasn't able to because Bronson grabbed him gave him a DVD. Now, thankfully, Sammy was able to hit a DVD, but then he went all WWF no mercy on our asses. He tried to give Bronson Reed an exploder. And even I was sitting in my chair going, Sam, he's too big. He still wasn't able to get out of the way of the tsunami, though, when he went for the halluva kick. And like I've told you, Britney Spears came into his mind. He did do it again because he was totally distracted because in the entranceway, Gunther was back and he had absolutely killed Chad Gable. Damn it. So you know the deal when something does happen outside of the squared circle, a wrestler totally forgets what they're doing. This time, Sami Zayn just ran to try and help his new buddy. Gunther was like, no, that ain't gonna go down. And he took the icy title and he smashed him right in the head. Now Zayn still tried to get up from this, but Gunther just took him out again. And I suppose this match ended in a disqualification. I don't think we ever got an official call. But of course, we're now selling the idea that even if Chad and Sammy do come together, they may not be strong enough to defeat the ring general. And that just means when Sami Zayn does do it, even if Chad Gable does help, we're just going to be like, yeah. And then it also gives Gunther an out, which means he can go right into the main event scene, which is what we should be doing. So I'm giving it an up, just like how kind of silly this is. Again, that video package was all kinds of wonderful. Do you so then invited Little Wayne to WrestleMania, which is one of the most surreal things I've seen in a while, when it turned out that Damage Control were on Raw, when we found out that Leah Maivia is going into the Hall of Fame. Of course, The Rock will be doing that speech, which makes the Hall of Fame very interesting. 
Raw kind of went a bit odd. Because it was Candice LeRae and Indy Hartwell taking on Ivy Nile and Maxine Dupree, and this all ties in. For the past two weeks, Candice has destroyed them emotionally. The thing is, though, this time when Indy saw that Candice was trying to cheat, she was all like, what are you doing? When Maxine Dupree drop-kicked Indy, she hit Candice, which essentially caused a distraction. When Dupree hit the most devastating move in all the sports entertainment, the surprise roll-up, and she got the one, two, three. And surprise, surprise, the Ray was not happy at all. And look, I still like the fact that Candice has decided to move to Horrible Town lately. But unless Indy is actually going to join her in being an absolute goober, this felt a little bit like it's all in fast forward. But given that they only got a few minutes, this just felt like another occasion where Ray should have been super, super nasty and somehow got the victory. And once again, we could have cut to Hartwell's face going, oh my gosh, you've totally lost your mind. That's a down for me because once more, it was just way too fast. And I just think there's something here that we're not capitalizing on. But look, you need some things for post-WrestleMania. So we'll wait and see. Jey Uso then told Seth Rollins that he has got his back no matter what happens, because he was reciprocating for what happened seven days ago, when Natalia just went, oh, yeah, by the way, my favorite match is Brett versus Owen Hart from WrestleMania 10. All right, thanks for telling us. My two big things were one, where did that come from? And two, of course you'd say that, Natty. You're quite literally in the family. Although she is telling the truth, if you haven't seen that match, you should be watching it right now. It's great. When man, Drew McIntyre went bonkers. It turned out he had spent his entire week editing videos and hired out a funeral parlor because he was standing in front of a coffin. And that's a weird thing to do. He was essentially delivering a eulogy for CM Punk though, because he has taken him out of WrestleMania. When he addressed Seth Rollins, he was like, man, you're like a horse that needs to be taken out the back and finally put down. That's what I'm going to do to you at the weekend. I mean, really, if any police person saw this, he should have been arrested. He also laughed at Seth because he based his entire character on the Joker played by Jared Leto. You know the deal with McIntyre these days. He quite literally never misses. I really do hope he wins the World Championship this weekend as well because it's all right there. And I suppose somebody like Damian Priest could catch in though I would hold that off. But either way, this was just a really good video package that made me go, well, I can't wait to see Drew McIntyre versus Seth Rollins and apparently turn into a puppet. But either way, up. When we sort of teased that maybe, just maybe, Ricochet is going to win the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. Because that is going down on SmackDown and he has been announced as one of the entrants. And while winning that thing usually means nothing, if we do give it to Ricky and we actually turn it into something that does have meaning, well, it could turn the whole thing around. The major point, though, is that he was taking on Ivar here and they had such a fun match. But Ricochet was just allowed to ping pong and go all crazy all over the place. And he looked better than maybe he's looked in ages. At one point, though, he was cut off by this massive bow of power, thanks to Ivar, who then did a springboard. I understand how he does this. He can, like, slap man beat. Then he can also be an agile Allen. Turns out this was all about surprises, though, because at one point Ricochet grabbed him and gave him a fall away slam. And that made me go nuts in the knees. When he went to the top and he did not hit the shooting star, he hit the 630. Oh, I think we've seen that for a while. So I really do think there's a reason for all of this. And this was quite the decisive victory. Like he was playing Street Fighter, it may have gone perfect. And Ricky even looked into the camera all defiant. So I'm going to keep an eye on this one. But as always, my word, he has magic in his toes. Well, that means up. I think Damien Priest must have watched this whole thing too, because he was pissed. He wanted to know why the Judgment Day haven't taken out Ricochet yet. When Finn Balor was like, Ricochet, what kind of name is that? I tell you, man, Finn Balor is an underrated gem. Dominic then continued to let people in the clubhouse. I was like, Dom, you've got to stop doing this. But this time it was Andrade, and he was like, hey, guys, Andrade will take out Ricochet, and if he does, we should let him into the group. Ruh -roh. I kind of feel like Andrade laughed this off too, so if I were going to hazard a guess, we will get through WrestleMania. One of the first feuds on the table will be Andrade versus Dom. I think I'm okay with it. Rhea Ripley had also heard that Becky Lynch was about to go to the ring, so she got ready. As Damien just stood there going, man, the guard for Del Fantasma are still playing darts. Seriously. The Judgment Day have been an absolute hoot for the last 12 months. And if they are on their final journey, well, it's a couple of thumbs from me. It turned out Rhea was totally right as well because Bex was in the squared circle. And she was just like, Rhea, get out of here right now. When Adam Pearce arrived, he was like, no, this is not going to happen. I don't want to jeopardize WrestleMania so close to the event. And I was like, well, why did you let them on the MMA hour, Adam? They almost killed each other. 
That is a wild exaggeration. Ripley didn't care about this though, so she walked out anyway. And after just mugging him off, they did get into a big old brawl. While there was security out here, they did the grand total of nothing, because as we know, wrestling security sucks. Eventually, Becky was able to dive onto everybody as well, and that's when this kind of ended, because they were separated. Although then, we cut to the commercial when we were backstage, and these two were still going at it. So this did go quicker than I was expecting, but I guess we were trying to fit everything in. And all I really know is that when someone says, hey, Simon, are you ready for Becky Lynch versus Rhea Ripley? I'm like, oh, you bet your ass. I think they're gonna have one of the matches of the weekend, and I still think Rhea Ripley should win, because it's just gonna leave people going, oh my gosh, I didn't see that coming. Then we can have a pot of tea, just getting it up, it was fine. Kokai then told us that Damage Control were the greatest and most dominant female faction in WWE history. And I was like, well, actually, to be fair, given that WWE usually breaks female groups up in about a week, He's probably right. As they are facing Bianca Belair, Jade Cargill, and Naomi at WrestleMania 2, they want a warm up, which is why they were going to have a match with Shayna Baszler, Tegan Knox, and Zoe Stark. Once again, I was like, wait, 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 where did that come from? They always wanted to know where the flub Natty was. She's just totally abandoned Tegan, although there was this great bit here when all the good guys did a simultaneous German suplex onto damage control and someone even went one, two, three, four. Now, I just thought that was really nice. I don't know why, I'm a strange person. Stark carried this on because she hit another German suplex and did a dive on her own. But eventually, Tegan tagged in. By this point, Oscar was done. She grabbed her. Kairi Sane came off the top with the insane elbow. And they just pinned her. This only went about eight minutes. Admittedly, the crowd was quite quiet for this as well, but you can't blame them because once again, it was like two plus two equals potato. You didn't understand what was going on. But when you do turn your attention to WrestleMania, this just laid the claim. Oh, yeah. Oscar, Kairi Sane, and Dakota Kai, they are a force to be reckoned with. So once again, it was all right. Give it an up. I do have a down though, because it was during this match I realized, man, the women's tag team titles aren't going to be defended at WrestleMania unless something happens on SmackDown. And I actually think that is a negative, because while those titles have been much better in 2024, you want them on the show of shows so everybody can go. They are a big deal. And not doing that, well, you can figure it out. That's a down. We then got the rundowns of WrestleMania and what's happening on Saturday or Sunday, but you can just see that online. You don't need me yelling at you. When Kathy Kelly was talking to Seth Rollins, he was heading to the ring. She thought that Seth accepting a match so close to WrestleMania was a terrible idea. When Rollins said, I've always got a plan B, and I was like, oh my gosh, that's what happened when he turned on the shield. He also then bumped into Drew and went, I'm not dead yet, without missing a beat. As soon as Rollins had kind of walked away, Drew just shouted, yet. <laughs> Guy really makes me laugh. It was a really awesome camera shot as well because we followed Seth all the way out into the arena. And I love seeing the gorilla position because I'm a massive nerd. When it was time for Bloodline Rules, Solo Sokoa versus Seth Rollins. This was absolutely crazy too when Solo put him through a table almost instantly. But when he went for the hip attack, he missed, meaning his ass went right into Simba the Still Step. I mean, that hurt my bum. That can't have been fun. Rollins made sure he got revenge soon after this too when he threw Solo through a table. And as soon as he hit the curb stop, Jimmy Uso just ran out. But once again, it was telling you, ha ha, bloodline rules, nobody can win. Obviously, Jay was going to come out to make the save, which he did do, and brother and brother fought to the back. And all of a sudden, at the entranceway, Jay just came flying out of the hole. I was like, what the flub has happened there? But then, of course, who made their presence known? It was The Rock. The final boss then walked to the ring because he was going to finish Seth Rollins off, who was down. I'm like, oh, I'm in a lot of pain right now. But he did this awesome smirk and right on cue, Cody Rhodes' music hit, the Brooklyn Center lost their minds. And fair play to Rocky as well, his face told a picture. Cody even attacked The Rock with punches. When The Rock fell down, for some reason to me, that was like, oh my gosh, he floored the great one. And these two were actually going to throw The Rock through Alan the announce table. When it turned out we were lied to again, because who hadn't left the building at all? It was Roman flipping Reigns. I mean, the Cody and Seth were also thrown into Rita the ring post as they got hit with every single finishing move. But once again, you can see what the message in the bottle here is. If it is bloodline rules and you're not the bloodline, you don't stand a chance. It turned out The Rock also has a new belt on it. This is this nightmare. And he took this and man, he whipped both these guys to the point it got a little bit uncomfortable. I want to ring up WWHQ and say, stop, stop, he's already dead. It also meant The Rock and the head of the table ended the show by holding up their respective belts. So you have to figure that given that Cody Rhodes has now been murked on two separate weeks, that come Sunday night, finally, finally, 
he is going to become the WWE Champion. It really is great stuff though, and it has got me so pumped for both main events, and that should always be the point when we get to a go-home show. And seeing The Rock get a little bit physical here, I don't know, I must be a nerd. I was like, oh my gosh, it's happening. Somebody shoot me out of a cannon. It up. I also do think it's going to be something that we do talk about for a long time, and maybe we even hear that glass breaks. We shall wait and see. But once again, should you go and watch Raw this week? Yes, you should. Getting it up. Now, of course, please do leave me a comment below and let me know what you thought about Monday Night Raw. Like the video, share the video, and subscribe. Click the video on the screen, which is ups and downs and for collision. Just because we are here, it's going to make it nice and clear so people stop yelling at me. NXT ups and downs is now gone, and so is collision ups and downs just because they weren't getting the views. There's no buys here. It's not like, heh <laughs> buy AEW or buy WWE. If it was up to me, I'd review all the shows, but that's not how a business works. So let's just forget about it, move on. There will be content taking its place, and after all, that doesn't matter. WrestleMania does. See you in Philadelphia, my friends. Goodbye.